Hello, this is Roy with the Love Chat, and today's topic is No Answer Will Ever Be Good Enough. Now, this is video number 234. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy these videos, I would be so very grateful, and it would help me out a lot, if you'd subscribe and hit like. If you're interested in coaching, we're running a discount on all coaching services right now. Just visit my website, thelovechat.net slash coaching, and use the code TLC. 2020. Now then, this video is about the case against trying to find out more information about the hows, the whys, and this doesn't just go for breakups, it also goes for rejection, and I really want you guys to think about what's really going on when we're being broken up with, and why we crave all of this additional information that ultimately we know, or maybe we don't know because we haven't sat and thought directly about it, but to a degree, we kind of know it doesn't really matter what I find out because I'm never going to be quenched. I'm never going to have enough information about them that makes me feel like, okay, now I understand. So no answer that you're ever given will ever be good enough. And this goes through a period of time, probably about the first, depending on how long you were together for, probably about the first four months. And that's a rough number, and I don't want anybody to get married to the number because there's no science behind it. It's more just a feeling, kind of a guess. And based on my own personal experiences and the experiences of those of you whom I've talked to, it doesn't matter what information you have. Now, just so I'm very clear, here's what I'm not talking about. If you listen to videos like mine, or if you find out some insight from a friend, that kind of makes you go, huh, I didn't think about it like that before. I'm not talking about stuff like that. And of course, there are many helpful resources like The Dating Guy, Craig Kenneth, some of you like Corey Wayne. And I'm not saying don't find out any information in terms of healing, in terms of here's maybe what they're going through. Here's maybe why it's not so easy for them either. Here's what no contact does, all that stuff. What I'm talking about is finding out information about your ex or about somebody who's rejected you or about somebody who you are going on a date with although admittedly it's much more of a case with the people who you've been broken up with or rejected by. But to a degree, no matter how much information you search, no matter how much social media stalking you do, it will never be enough. No amount of information will ever be enough. No answer you get will ever be enough. And I think you just want to understand, like I spoke about a few videos ago, that you need to treat yourself as though you are a drug addict for your ex because whenever you find out new information about your ex or the person that's rejected you or whoever's being obsessed over in your mind, it doesn't matter what you find out about them because you're always going to crave more. And I tried to find a way to really verbalize what this video was supposed to be about and I think the best way, or rather the best example I can use is this. You were just broken up with and you, within the first, let's say, month, begin just this whole secret agent operation, and we've covered that in a previous video as well, where you are finding out what they're doing on Instagram and Facebook, and you're doing something where you can look at their stories and then block them so that they don't see that you looked at their stories. So you're finding out all this information, and what never recurs to people is that, yes, fine, you know that on June 25th, they went to their sister's, cousin's, nephew's, dry-cleaning lady's barbecue, and that there they happened to speak to somebody of the opposite sex. And now you're telling everybody in your orbit why it's hopeless and there's no chance. But that's not helpful. And yet, even knowing that, even dooming yourself like you just did, you still want more information. Which is mind-boggling, right? You want even more information despite the fact that you've been searching up all this information and you probably have more information about them than you've ever had in your life. And yet you still want more and more and more and more. The reality is that no answer will ever be good enough. So stop looking for one. Stop trying to figure out why you got rejected or why the breakup ultimately happened. Now, what I'm not talking about is owning your part, but that has so much more to do with self-reflection Self-education, learning about attraction, learning about attachment theory, no contact, the principle of least interest, the fading affect bias, all the stuff that we talk about on this channel. But at some point, you have to just say to yourself, like, I don't feel any better despite all of this information that I have. I don't have any answers. I have guesses. 
and no matter how much more digging I do, I will come no closer to an answer. And so it's almost like taking a drug, and then the drug wears off. Now it's time to take the drug again. Why? Because I'm without the drug. But in this case, the drug is finding out information regarding your former partner, somebody who's rejected you, etc. So you want to think, look, me finding out all this extra information is not making me feel any better. It's not making me any wiser. And again, we spoke about the context in which I use the word information. The useless information. The dry cleaning ladies barbecue information. And at some point, you just want to say, screw it. This isn't helping. In fact, it's prolonging my hurt. So why would I do it? Now, don't get me wrong. There is a time to go through this stage. And I think together, we're going to rewrite the whole rules of the dumpy or the, the stages of the dumpy is the better way to put it. But the real truth of the matter is that you will never stop hurting if you persist finding information that is useless to your cause. Your cause, first and foremost, must be yourself. If your cause is your ex, or the girl that rejected you, or the guy that never pays attention to you, well, that's not a cause. That's, that's an obsession. And what's the difference, you might ask, is because the cause means no matter how much work I do on this situation, I have no power over them. I have no power to make what they do, what they think, how they feel, different. So that's like putting a pin back in a grenade. There's no point. Throw it. Let it go. Let go of what is hurting you. And really, when I say let go, people are, I can already, I can like feel, despite the fact I'm recording this video, you know, hours before you guys are listening to it, I can feel everybody's collective blood pressure rising. They're like, what do you mean let go? You know what I'm talking about. Let go of this particular practice. You're going to organically move forward from your ex in time. What I'm talking about when I say let go is let go of the searching of useless information because all it's doing is hurting you and it is not helping you become more attractive and your best self. And hey, you said that your objective here was to do one of several things, right? But the main one is to win your ex back. And maybe that's in the cards. Maybe it's not. We can never know until it happens. And so my pitch is, and it always has been, and it will always continue to be, love yourself first, because that's a worthy goal. And that's a goal that you have actual power over. So what's so wrong with that? And, you know, it's funny because sometimes people will complain that, well, the videos are just all about no contact and working on yourself. I want my ex back. And those are the type of people that I want to ban the most. Because if that's your mentality, God bless. It's not going to work out for you. Sorry. And it shows that you haven't been listening to what creates attraction. So we want to be attractive for ourselves. We want to feel attractive for ourselves. And what drives me nuts is that these things are so obtainable. All you need to do is reach out and grab them. You need to pick your goals, stick to your goals, and then you will feel better about your life. Feeling better about your life causes you to act more happy. Being happy makes people want to be around you, right? Attract, like a magnet. You draw people in towards you because they want a piece of what you got. It's straightforward, but nobody thinks of it like that. They think tactics. What are my tactics? Let me hit up Brad Browning. Hey, BB, what's going on? What do I text this girl? And unfortunately... Sometimes manipulation works. Sometimes it does. But I guarantee it'll always end. And it will always end in flames. So, folks, my elevator pitch is simple. Let go of what is hurting you. Let go of what is hampering your process. And remember, self-love is not just about doing the right things, right? It's also about avoiding the wrong things. And I think people need to remember that sometimes avoiding the wrong things is far more impactful than doing the right things. Don't get me wrong, you should still do both. But if you're checking your ex's social media every day, um, kiss your healing goodbye. It's never going to happen. And don't forget to be good to yourself. You guys beat yourselves up so much. Mistakes are going to happen along the way, and that's okay. 
we're not born perfect and we'll, we'll never be perfect. So be kind, especially to yourselves. That's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be so very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. I feel like this one's an important one, so I'm going to do something I rarely do and ask you guys to share this one with people who might need it. Because we are all very, very guilty of doing this. If you'd like extra videos every week, private live streams with me, and free giveaways of my best-selling book on Amazon, just visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash TheLoveChat. Until next time.